It's just a trade. Why are you so sensitive? If you're so sensitive, and Buffett talked about it years ago, he said most people should not do this. You're too emotional. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, uh, happy weekend everybody and welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, three day weekend. Um, I need this like a fish needs water. Uh, any chance we get, in, again, especially in this COVID environment to kind of decompress, uh, get our thoughts together and just kind of take a deep breath because there's so many different pressures that are still on all of our shoulders to kind of just kind of get through this pandemic together. Uh, now, I, I believe it's about 10% of uh, the popular, at least in the United States, uh, got at least their first dose of the vaccine. Uh, I've heard, you know, different, you know, just even speaking to the people in, in the live webinars, certain, certain people uh, got the first dose and they felt absolutely nothing. Uh, there was one gentleman in our room had 104 fever for three, four days. So, you know, hopefully this thing does work. Uh, hopefully there's gonna be a crowd immunity and maybe by, you know, next year, we could all be back at ball games, um, you know, bars, restaurants that are, you know, 100% uh, occupied and just live life, man. Just, you know, it's been such a tough year mentally uh, for so many people, you know, taking the stock market away from it. Um, that, you know, people need it. You know, people just need a break just to kind of do the little things, not to worry about somebody's going to cough on you and sneeze on you. And the next thing you know, you're going to be uh, in, a, in a world of uh, in a world of crap. So hopefully everybody's doing well. Monday, the markets uh, are off. So enjoy your time with your family and friends. Decompress. Uh, have a little fun uh, if possible. So let's talk about the tape. Um, what, what Again, market strong, right? I mean, there's nothing really left to analyze from the macro point of view. Um, I, I think the biggest point that I, I have been talking about, especially for you, if, you know, for all you guys who are new uh, to this uh, broadcast, we've been kind of talking about the, the, the real edge in this market right now, just because there's so much big uh, speculation money in this tape. Uh, people are really making deep out of the money uh, option bets, right? Uh, call buyers are coming in near term expiration. We've been kind of covering this in nausea, but that's what's really driving uh, the price action, the price per share is really exploding. The more people are entering uh, the options market and spe speci specifically, uh, if I could ever speak, uh, specifically in a lot of smaller names, it's really driving the price. So it's very, very tough to argue that there is uh, no correlation between the options market and the underlying security when you see uh, even small names, right? And you know, I've had I had caught a really couple of names. If you've been watching this broadcast, I'm you know I'm a beta trader. I trade you know Tesla, and we'll get to Tesla in a second. Tesla, Facebook, Apple, stuff like that. But the the the, mar the money has been in these smaller names, and especially when you start seeing really aggressive option flow, it's been really good. So for example, OGI. Um, you know, this thing, they, this thing started out around, you know, $2, $2 and change. Um, I got long this thing 224 because they were coming in for two weeks out, right? Two weeks out of the $5 calls. And when you, when you, when you, when you sit in there watching like an options montage, excuse me, an options uh, scanner. And again, they're all comparable. Flow Algo is great. Cheddar is great. Uh, trade alerts are, they're all comparable, right? It doesn't make a difference where you get your data from. But when you see one after another, they're coming in, you know, when we got long the stock in around two and a quarter, when you're coming in for the next week's $5 calls over and over and over and over and over again, you know, it's it's almost like it's it, it's almost like a green light screaming at you, you know, just get long the stock. And the stock literally in three days after that went to 650. Same thing with this little DNN. Um, on Tuesday, right, we saw probably the, the most aggressive call, call buyers I've seen in, in a little stock ever, like ever. And I thought that the $5 calls were aggressive on OGI. We were watching DNN. The stock was at 104. Uh, that's where I got long. Uh, initially made that first, had a 20% run. I sold my stock, got back long on the close. Uh, they were coming in for next week's 250 calls like like every it felt like every minute like really really every minute 
And the damn thing went from literally a dollar four, dollar five to pre-market all the way to a dollar sixty. So the options market is incredible in this tape. It, it's especially driving uh, smaller cap names. Even a name like Friday, if you even a name um, like OI. Uh, I tweeted this. Um, I or or is it IO? I apologize. IO. I, I tweeted this on um, on my regular feed. I didn't put this on the Twitter feed. They, a buyer came in, right? A buyer came in. Which one was? It? Let me just look at my phone really quick. A buyer came in, I believe it was for the, um, I'll tell you right now, I'll give me one second, here it is. A buyer came in uh, for next week's, okay, 750 calls. This is when the stock was at $3, right? I tweeted this out. The stock went from literally $3 to almost five and a half in about 10 minutes, just, just to show how incredible the option flow market is, uh, especially in the small cap name. So for all you guys, even if you don't trade options, again, again, I've been saying this uh, randomly for a long time, get yourself an option scanner. It's, it's, it's gonna cost you roughly about 150 bucks a month. Maybe, maybe 150 is like for uh, flow algo, maybe cheddar's a little, little more, uh, a little cheaper. And I think trade, uh, trade alerts is definitely more expensive, but somewhere in, in that area, in the $150 area, get yourself an option, options uh, scanner, not even just for, you know, not even for the small cap market, but even a name like CCIV uh, on Friday, when the stock was at $34, they were coming for next week's 40 and 50, you know, 40 and 50 calls. Guys, look at the spike on these things. So the, the options market is doing incredibly well. It's giving a lot of uh, you know, it's really giving a lot of clues where the stock is going to go. And even the big mega cap names that we've been kind of covering uh, for the last two weeks, right? You know, Nvidia had this really great breakout that we caught uh, off this 560 level. And you can see the options market dictating short-term expiration. They were coming for uh, this week's 600 calls. And, you know, Nvidia went to 611. Even ZM uh, that we caught perfectly off this 400, 405 level. We talked about the measure potential of 430s. They were coming for the 450s, the 460s, the 500 calls. They do report, but you, you could see where, again, where the big money flow was coming in. And if you look at some names that, you know, that I do like uh, for this week, um, you know, names, for example, like a laser, right? Which I, I, I like, you know, I like it's coming out of a range here. You know, they were coming for next week's $45 calls, right? The stock's at 37. You're talking about a 45. Hey, look, is it possible the stock, you know, doesn't do anything? Of course, you see a lot of order flow uh, throughout the week that does absolutely nothing. For example, uh, two weeks ago, I saw a guy come in for this past expiration for the 90 calls on FUBU when the stock was at 50. Obviously his money, you know, his money expired worthless. So there's a lot of name, there's a lot of names, there's a lot of Hail Mary bets that people uh, are, you know, basically gone to zero on their bets. But if you look at the option activity where the stock is correlating on the daily chart, you could see why they're taking their bets. So Laser, for example, for next week has my attention, right? Definitely has my attention. The 52 all-time high is roughly 48. Somebody came in for the 45 calls a couple of times, right? We'll see, right? If it starts taking out and confirming this upper channel, can it wake up? Absolutely. There's definitely, uh, there's definitely something there uh, to watch. You know, a name like Bingo uh, that broke out on Friday had some pretty aggressive uh, option calls. Uh, coming in for the name. So if, if a name is coming out of a channel and you're getting deep out of the money calls, keep an eye on these names. These are names uh, that probably will get a, a lot of interest. Uh, even names, uh, for example, that I don't trade usually, but you start looking at the options market, right? Like an ATVI that looks really good for next week, right? Like look at ATVI, big gap up on earnings is going sideways. If this thing confirms and the options market starts putting in some deep out of the money uh, call buying, it's a name you should be watching. A name like Google that I really don't trade anymore, but this week I'm watching it, you know, big move. Uh, big move on uh, earnings, and now it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days in a row. You're talking about by the time that uh, you know Monday rolls around, you have two weeks of worth of consolidation. If you start seeing you know 2,200 calls coming in, and Google's at 2,100, yeah, pay attention. This is where uh, the you know this is where the directional bias on strong names consolidating, and when you're getting option flow, uh, you're getting really, really big moves to kind of correlate what you're seeing on the daily channel. So uh, the market's been a really, really good, really good week, okay? 
Um, I only did a couple of things on Friday. I was just so tired. It's just so mentally uh, tough. Again, for all you guys who don't know, um, I speak seven hours uh, in the webinar between trading and answering questions and this and that, the other thing. My, my brain is on overload. So by the time Friday comes along, man, I'm dead. Like I'm mentally shot. And um, you know, this uh, this Friday was was really good. Uh, I only took a couple of trades just because uh, I was just exhausted. Uh, number one, we came in long on this DNN, uh, so I sold my position in the 130s, my last piece from 105. Uh, but Tesla, and again, guys, I, I want to say something. You know, I I really want to say something. So the the last video I made was on Wednesday nights. Uh, there, there's never, um, there's not a Thursday video because that's the night um, I kind of take off. So if, for all you guys who are wondering how come there's no uh, Thursdays videos between uh, between everything that I just talked about, I'm, I'm just mentally shot. So it's very, very important to me to kind of pick my spots uh, throughout the week to be uh, fully functional for the trading day. So I'd rather take off Thursday night and not record a video than be like a you know completely brain mush by the time Friday rolls around. So I kind of pick my battles. So if you guys remember on Wednesday, I, I was looking for um, I was looking for a breakdown in Tesla, right? And, and and again, and I and I said this the nicest way possible. I know so many people are so soft and thin skinned I had to reiterate, even in the title of the video, how much I love Elon, how much I love. Tesla, how much I love everything. This is just a trade. Nobody's talking about Tesla's going to zero. This is not Armageddon. And right away, you know, people are so emotional. Okay. And this is why one of the biggest components why people fail in this industry, they're so protective of this stock. I love this stock, Dan. I hope you die. We're just talking about a freaking trade here, for God's sake. And Tesla popped up, you know, Tesla popped up on Thursday's session. But we were still watching this channel here, right? We were talking about this channel here that needed to break. And then we were talking about this macro channel here. Um, what I like about Friday's session was it gave us that pivot on Tesla. Okay, it really did. Uh, it, if you can see here, it held 800 twice. And again, folks, it's just a trade. Why are you so sensitive? If you're so sensitive, and Buffett talked about it years ago, he said most people should not be in the stock market. You're too emotional. You're too sensitive. Everybody knows I love Tesla, right? Is it so bad that I could take advantage of a channel going to the downside? Is it so horrible that us as traders take advantage of the market we have, not the market we want? Of course, I would love to everybody buy, buy it at 900, right? 900 all-time highs, $1,200 call buyers coming in. Everybody's happy, right? Best stock ever. But there's two sides of the market. Trade both sides. So the idea that you can love a stock but not take advantage on both sides of the market is crazy. And if you are so sensitive, if you are so thin skinned, you're not gonna just not make it in the trading world. You're not gonna make it in life, right? Words hurt, you know, right? Toughen up, right? Toughen up. I love Tesla, everybody knows I love Tesla. But again, when there is a two-sided potential in a stock that gives such big aggression, why not take it? You tell me you would rather watch Tesla take down this whole channel here and go down 50, 60 points and say, I'm not gonna short it because I love it. No, the advantage is there, the order flow is there, the options market's there, it's gonna give you an opportunity. So for all you guys who are in love with your Amazons and Teslas of the world and Facebooks of the world, just understand, stocks go up, stocks go down, and there's professional traders that are looking for opportunity to take both sides of the equation. Doesn't mean they don't believe in the product. If I'm ever short Amazon, doesn't, believe, doesn't mean I'm not ordering constantly from Amazon. I love Amazon, everybody loves Amazon. I love Tesla, right? Love the car, love Elon. I think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, the greatest trading stock of all time. But that's the key. It's the greatest trading stock of all time, okay? If you wanna hold it and you know hold it for the next five years, I'm sure if everything goes well, unless Elon double murders the postman and uh, you know the gardener in the same day, you know Tesla will get to where you want it to go as an investor. But as a trader, you're looking for channels to work. You're looking for channels to take it, you know, to take advantage on both sides of the market. So before you start telling me about gigafactories and battery day and all that nonsense that I don't care about, all I care about is price action on one side or the other, you're wasting your time. Because again, I love Tesla and you're telling me about things about five years from now that have no basis of what's gonna happen today. So before you, you know, before the investors of the world start talking to the traders, just understand our time horizon. It has nothing to do with you, and it's no disrespect. I completely respect 
every shareholder of every single company. But if you're telling me your if your vote, you know, if you're telling me your views about a stock that I'm just trying to take advantage of of its interval, it's like having a conversations between an orange and a hand grenade. One doesn't correlate to another. So before your you know your sensitive ears you know listen to any future broadcasts about your stock potentially going lower, just understand respectfully where I'm coming from, so we could both kind of coexist together. Because at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, your stock eventually will go up and your stock eventually will go down. The question is, can you accept that mentally or, or are you so thin skin that every single word coming from a technical point of view is gonna hurt your feelings? That's kind of the end of, end of that discussion. So again, respect the trader, trader respect the investor, and believe me, we could uh, coexist. So let's talk about uh, Friday's session. Uh, mostly there was a lot of small cap order flow that's why I don't put a lot of it uh, on the Twitter feed. Uh, this was the trade. I mean, this was definitely the trade uh, of the day. We talked about that Tesla channel on Wednesday's video. It didn't. Uh, it didn't trigger on Thursday, right? So we waited for for, for Friday session. Eight hundred held twice. If it builds below, can flush. The macro area still needs to be needs to confirm the seven eighty, which is the one twenty nine lows. And here was the Tesla trade. It was a great trade. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. And and that's the point. It was a great trade. The macro trade hasn't started yet, but it was a great trade. So here was the eight hundred level, right? We talked about eight hundred held twice. It took down the eight hundred level and put down and put up a seventeen dollar candle. What is so wrong with that, right? We still love Tesla. I think it's great. I think the stock did a great job uh, holding the January 29 lows of 780 and woke back up. But at least here is the channel and we took advantage of this channel. Got stock got absolutely hit, right? 15, 17 points on the move. What's wrong with that? Raise your hand if that's such a bad thing in your life. So the most important part is just relax, take a deep breath and, and again, respect your fellow trader investor. And you can see here where the macro channel is still, you know, it's still intact. Tesla did a great job, uh, reclaimed the upper Bollinger Band and went, but there was an opportunity. And if this thing ever gets down and starts breaking down below the 780 level, that's what we talked about on the Wednesday's video. There's a lot of room down, but until it starts breaking down in this channel, there is no trade now. So now if you are a Tesla if you're a Tesla permable, you already know your line in the sand. It held it on Friday. It, you know your line in the sand. And now for the Tesla bull case, it really needs to start getting above this 845 level, which is kind of the intermediate level of supply. So if it starts getting above the 845 level, any close above that, then we could start making moves right back to that 52 week high. And guess what? I will be buying stock up there because again, that is where the value is. And if the stock starts getting below 780, guess what? I will be shorting the stock there. Tesla, trader, investor, right? We could all come together and hug each other, right? Kumbaya, right? So that's that. So yeah, so that's that there. So Tesla has a lot of work to do uh, to get back into supply. Uh, we know where the line in the sand is uh, going in there also. Uh, BYND on Friday um, had a nice push. It just didn't continue, which was very, very odd. Uh, 177, 178. Uh, needs to build. Uh, there is supply there, so make sure it reclaims. And Beyond had a nice move here. Um, you know, nice move here. Came out of the 177 channel. Uh, it went to almost uh, 182, and then then they really pulled the plug, which was very very odd, uh, considering the market kind of woke up. Uh, QTT never confirmed. ATVI, which I really like this week. Uh, guys, watch this ATVI this week. Look at the consolidation. Uh, look at the consolidation. They make um, what do they do? They do they do one of these video games. They do. Um, one of these war games, I forgot the name of it. It's very, very Medal of Honor or something like that. Uh, anyway, looks looks really, really good. Good, good consolidation there. Uh, FSRV is a SPAC, never confirmed there. I still like it. I, I do. I still like it. Uh, if it starts, you know, taking out this whole channel here, it can still go. So keep an eye on this FSRV for this week. Uh, a lot of names kind of rested. Uh, GLSI I like as well. Um, you know, a little bit on the thin side, but if this thing could ever just start building. Uh, above the 40 level and you know went to 41 and a half but um, you know it's still just a little little it's just not ready just yet uh yeah so seven you know this is getting murdered uh 780 will be the next big level i uh, just you know went to 785 didn't didn't confirm and there's a and the funny thing is it had such a really good look that it was completely going to get was gonna about to get destroyed on friday guy came in 
for the January, February, for the March 680 puts for 2 million. That's why it was such a great job that the Tesla bulls actually held up and the stock went higher because this type of bet usually results uh, on much more selling, but Tesla did a really good job. Uh, so it put up a, a four or $5 candle on beyond and just kind of fizzled out afterwards. Um, I think going into this week, there's some pretty good value. Like I said, I like laser. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. Um, I like wind. Look at wind. Wind looks actually pretty good. You know, wind, wind is consolidating for about a week and change. Uh, that looks pretty good. Guys, look at Google. Look at this Google chart. Again, I'm not a big Google trader, but I will be a big, well, at least at least a trader of Google today, uh, this week. Look at this chart. If this thing starts consolidating, this is now almost two weeks of consolidation. Uh, this thing's gonna go higher. Uh, Peloton looks good. Look at Peloton for this week. That looks pretty good as well. Uh, broke about this channel here. If it can start confirming uh, Friday's price action, maybe it goes to uh, 161. So there's a lot of good things on tap. Uh, Chewy also broke out. Uh, nice looking chart there as well. Uh, TDOC is still consolidating, but if TDOC finally gets above those channels, uh, maybe wakes up as well. You got earnings coming out from uh, Roku, which had a monster, monster run this year. Uh, you have earnings coming up on Zoom, uh, which, which again, it had a really great range coming out of this macro channel, but it still hasn't even broken out yet. So before you know, earnings or even after earnings, if they can start confirming this whole channel here, then you have 500 uh, potentially on your plate. So folks, have a great, great remainder of your uh, President's Day weekend. Traders coexist with investors. Investors understand that traders and investors are completely different things. Respect their opinions, okay? Respect their views. Their timeline has nothing to do with you. We all love Amazon. We believe Amazon goes to 5,000 one day, but if there is a short signal on Amazon, we will take it and you shouldn't feel any type of way uh, to feel disrespected or feel uh, that somebody's talking down to you. Stocks go up, stocks go down. We live, we try, we love. God bless, I'll see you all next week.